Hey, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 17th, coming up on 1030 a.m. here. Today we're going to look at a possible strong front impact in the Pacific Northwest on Thursday. We'll look at that in some detail. We also have a weak system sliding down tonight into Tuesday through eastern portions of Washington, Idaho, and western Montana there. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Hunga Tonga blast one more time. We're going to see if it did have perceptible impact on our weather here in the Pacific Northwest. We're going to take a look at my webcam there and we'll match it up the time that the wave passed. So jumping right into that, you can see here, watch the wind going from right to left on the screen here. You can see it switch and then you see the fog lift. And this is right before the wave passed. So look at that right to left. Got a little bit of a wind switch and then the fog cleared. And this is the time lapse here. So the wind speed wasn't really even detectable by anemometers, just barely, like maybe one mile per hour or so. But you can see that again, that movement from right to left. And then as the wave approached, the wind shifted just enough and you see the fog clear. So it looks like the National Weather Service in Seattle was correct. They put out this tweet here about the interesting phenomena from this morning. This would be Saturday morning. When the pressure shock wave arrived, it may have changed the depth of the temporary inversion over the area. SeaTac temporarily cleared from the fog with the arrival of the shock wave, then fogged in again. And that's what my webcam showed, and that was the exact time of that pressure wave arrival. So, yeah, very fascinating stuff there. So, taking a look at our Pacific Ocean GO 17 satellite imagery here, you can see we've got this next system for Thursday is out here lurking out by near the date line here. We've got a weak system sliding down. Uh, this is going to come by Monday night tonight into Tuesday, and we'll go into that in a little bit of detail here. But our next system here could bring us po a powerful front on Thursday, so we'll take a look at that in some detail. And here's the last look at the pressure wave. This was the first one that moved through on Saturday morning. This would be the second one. You notice how the first two brought a rise in the pressure, then it dropped off. And the third one just looks like it didn't have much of a pressure rise with it, just dropped the pressure a little bit and then recovered. So we, I measured three separate waves, one of these traveling almost one and a half times around the planet and registering on my stations again. There could even be another one today. Just It'll probably be very weak and barely perceptible, but it could be there. So taking a look at, this is Northern Hemisphere, here's North America here, here's our next system out here, could potentially bring us a strong front to Western Washington. You can see that big snowstorm on the East Coast, they're finally working its way up and out of the region there over the uh, Nova Scotia area and up towards Greenland. And then you can see our front here approaching Thursday, so you can trace it all the way back here, you can see it. West of Hawaii moves over and then brings us a good shot of rain on Thursday. It surpasses through. And there could be a convergence zone behind that. So that could be interesting too. There's always a chance for a lightning strike or some fun activity, maybe a lower snow level in the convergence there zone there up into the mountains. So here is the dynamic tropopause here. And you can see the cold air well out here over the Pacific Ocean here. And as it moves in, you'll see that boom, kind of run right over the Pacific Northwest there. So that could be a marking of our moderate to strong front. I hesitate to call it strong, but it is something. And at least it'll clear out the, the area here, uh, you know, the stagnant air, mix it around a bit before we go back into some ridging after that. You can see that ridge developing uh, after the front passes through here. So here's a closer up look at that. You can see that cold air moving across Pacific Ocean there. And then that impacts us right there. This would be Thursday morning. So looking into that a little bit more here, here's the GFS version of it here. You can see it show this, this lobe of colder air loft as it moves across the region there. So here is the, the European. So it shows that powerful front moving through on Thursday morning. Then you notice that's a convergence zone signature behind that. And how do we know that's a convergence zone signature? If we look here, you can see we got the southwesterly winds here as this moves across the powerful front. Then you see kind of a wind shift behind it, more westerly. And then you can kind of see the winds wrapping around here, uh, kind of a lull there over Seattle and the westerly winds coming down the strait and through the Chehalis Gap and meeting in, over the convergence zone area there just north of Seattle, probably on Thursday afternoon. NAM showing the same thing here. You can see winds wrapping around and meeting on the east side of the Olympic Mountains there over the... Puget Sound. So looking at the region here, you can see we have dense fog advisories still. We've got a winter storm 
uh, actually high wind warning there for portions of Montana east slopes. And you can see winter, winter weather advisory for portions of Montana. That's going to be that system sliding down tonight into Tuesday. And it might mix up our air a little bit here in uh, some of the areas of Washington, Oregon, but not too much. The Thursday system should do that a little bit better. Then we're going to go back into another stagnant air period after that. So here's Missoula. Snow returns Tuesday and Wednesday. This is for uh, portions of the Idaho Panhandle and very western Montana there. Wintry mix possible for the valleys. You can see you got a high wind warning out for gusts, isolated gusts up to 75 miles per hour. So intense little system moving through there. Winter weather advisory for Great Falls area out there in western Montana. Spokane, they're talking about Tuesday, Thursday, mountain snow and valley mix, minor impacts in the passes. So heads up if you're traveling eastbound out of western Washington or western Oregon into Idaho or more Montana. And then we go back into kind of the stagnant um, flow there, winds light with poor ventilation, as you can see that highlight there. And we saw freezing fog advisories for the basin out there in the lower valley, low, lower valleys there in eastern Washington and eastern Oregon. So heads up for that. Portland, check out the valley. <laughs> Air stagnation advisory. It's no fun, I know. So yeah, fog still hanging around. It's mixing up a little bit up here in Seattle. They don't quite, they don't have the dense fog advisory, and maybe you'll see the sun a little bit up here in the Puget Sound, but. We'll have to see how that goes today. Take a look at the extended here. You can see that we've got the European Pacific North American oscillation here. And this is kind of, this is a tease here. I mean, this is kind of nice looking. You can see as we dive into negative territory starting late January and really get down there into early February, February 1st there. So this is just another signal. It, you know, it's kind of been showing this. I know it's still far out, but it, it this is only a couple weeks away now. So Maybe we'll start to get close enough where we can actually see some of this start to manifest itself in the models. This is the CFS here. You can see we've got, this is Saturday, uh, February 5th here. So you can see the ridging up over Alaska. Maybe this will bring us back to a north flow and let some systems, some colder systems affect us there later January and early February. So again, this is just something to watch for. Um, not a big deal right now. This is something just to kind of get snow lovers a little bit excited out in fantasy land so yeah this is the next system for thursday way out here we got this weak system moving over the top of us uh tonight into tuesday that's going to bring some actual possible light rain to western portions of washington some snow into the cascades light amounts no advisory or warning level amounts are expected and it might mix up the air a little bit into eastern washington and a little bit more on thursday before we go back into a stagnant pattern later on into next week so this is that's it for today i will have another video out tomorrow and check back for twitter on any updates keep watching that extended signal and hope that maybe something starts to play itself out and i will talk to you guys tomorrow thanks